Hey readers, this is Liz Davidson from Beyond Solitaire Books, and I want to talk about a book that I finished recently called Children of the Alley. This is by Naguib Mahfouz. He's a very famous Egyptian author who won a Nobel Prize for Literature. And Children of the Alley is possibly his most controversial work. But what's really interesting is I really wouldn't have thought that unless I did some background reading and found that out. So I'm going to talk about why that would be. So Children of the Alley is just, it's ostensibly just the story of these people who live in an alley in Cairo, and they go about their everyday lives, and they are oppressed by a bunch of, I think it's like translated as gangsters in here sometimes, like strongmen, bullies, who, you know, believe that might makes right and always end up taking over again. But the premise is that there is a man named Jabalawi who lives in the mansion up at the top of the alley. And the idea is that everybody is descended from him in this alley. And they're really all supposed to be having an equal share in Jebelawi's estate. So instead of having everyone have an equal share of the goods of this estate, you get these bullies and strongmen who are hogging more than their fair share, who care about profit and control more than they care about these other people. And so oppression happens among these people in the alley who are supposed to share. And then against that backdrop, you have these sort of special people of the alley who rise up every so often and become figures that people tell stories about, that people remember. And it's very clear that these are kind of representatives within this story of biblical prophets. So there's Adam, you get Moses, you get Jesus, you get Muhammad, um, and you also get somebody who appears to be science. And what's interesting is that throughout the story, all of these different figures rise and they gain a following and they really impress themselves in the memories of the people of the alley. But what happens is that these people either are killed or they die because it's just, they're, you know, it's a story of an alley where they're still kind of normal people. And even though they claim that they have heard from their ancestor Jabalawi and that they know his will and they know what's supposed to happen in the alley and people might believe them for a while, when they're gone, um, their viewpoint eventually sinks away and everything gets taken over again by the bullies and the strongmen. So the alley and life in the alley is kind of a bleak life that's punctuated by these brief moments of freedom and human will um, and the quest to actually get things right. Uh, writing style wise, I mean, I don't, I don't read fluent Arabic, unfortunately, but I liked the translation a lot. And I felt like this is one of those more recent stories that has kind of like a whiff of the eternal about it. It really felt like an old story even though the book itself is relatively recent. I'm pretty sure this was written in like the 50s. What's really interesting about it though is that I saw Mafuz's point that basically, you know, we get a sense of divine will and we have our own prophets, whether you believe they're divine or not. Um, and they bring these good messages and they try to reorder a broken world. And then once they're gone without the guidance of the religious leader who is good, we just fall apart again and fall right back into being selfish and mean and violent. And this is something that just happens repeatedly throughout Children of the Alley. And I actually thought that that was pretty accurate to the world and that Nagib Mahfouz had a good point and that the symbolic retellings were really nice and clever. And, you know, when I could see parallels with biblical literature, I was like, oh, that's really exciting. Oh, that's really cool. How well done. This is so lovely. You know, what a neat book. So to me, this was harmless and pretty entertaining and something nice to think with. And I just really, really enjoyed it. However, uh, when I looked this up, I learned that Naguib Mahfouz had a really hard time publishing this book in Egypt, that there were many attempts to stop it from even being printed daily in the newspaper that had printed it in its original run. And that, um, you know, at one point he was stabbed in the neck over this book by, I might add, a man who had never read it. So this is where Children of the Alley gets really interesting because right now in the United States, we're having so many conversations about book banning and what books people should have easy access to, what books should we be able to read, what books should Barnes & Noble be able to sell if you're in Virginia. And 
I think that we should be looking to other examples of book bannings and why in order to think about this in our own lives and in our own situations. Because the story surrounding the challenges of Children of the Alley is actually sort of scary and surprising in a lot of ways. So basically this book, because it kind of retells biblical stories, really upset uh, a large number of people in Egypt at the time, especially clerics who wanted to have their say and who felt that Nagi Mafus was disrespecting religion and that maybe he was not religious enough, you know, and he of course denies that and says this is literature, this is, you know, you could even read it politically, although that actually led to its own problems within Egypt. But basically the idea is that even retelling these stories in a symbolic way is for some considered disrespectful. And that's, I think, an idea that is sort of surprising here in the United States. Like, I mean, we made a big deal out of the shack and like, that was very popular. This is a great work of literature <laughs> and it, uh, it's gotten, it got slammed in, in its time and even up to today. So I actually ended up reading a separate book to help me understand Children of the Alley better because I'm pretty sure this is a new translation. Uh, most of the reviews of it on Goodreads are in Arabic. But I got an English copy of the story of the banned book. And this is by Mohammed Shoer. And this is basically like a, a nonfiction book that covers a lot of the issues surrounding people's opinions about Children of the Alley and how Nagib Mahfouz reacted to his critics at the time, what his critics were saying. And this book, it wasn't, a, it was kind of a dry book, but I learned a lot from reading it. So I'm really, really glad that I did. So I want to describe some of the things that were in here so that um, maybe you'll go check it out too. So what Shoair's book gave me that I didn't get from just reading Children of the Alley, which to me just seemed like an innocent enough um, commentary on modern difficulties, but using like kind of scriptural tropes. I thought that was all it was personally. Um, <clears throat> this created a huge uproar and this happened for both religious and political reasons. So religiously, um, a lot of clerics found this very disrespectful to the Quran and to the prophets and all of that. Even though Nagi Mahfouz would say, well, it's not, read it, you know, actually read it. And it's very clear a lot of people didn't. The other thing that happened, however, that was difficult, is that Nagi Mahfouz wrote a book that could be interpreted politically as a book about the constant return of oppression, um, even in the face of prophets trying to fight back. And of course, politically in Egypt over the years, that's also been a difficult position to uh, advance. Let's put it that way. And then against the backdrop of all this, you know, um, Nagi Mahfouz wrote several screenplays. He's, he wrote so many novels. You know, Children of the Alley is not his only piece of work. It's just the one that's the most, I guess, polarizing. And so therefore one of the ones that's the most interesting to talk about. But what was really fascinating is that kind of the uproar over Children of the Alley happened at the time of its publication. It would happen like whenever it seemed like somebody was going to try to publish it as a whole book. So um, Children in the Alley was originally published as like a daily installment in a newspaper that everybody at the time got really crazy about because the novel was so controversial. So the the issues that Nagi Mahfouz had were trying to get it published like as a, a full book in Egypt. So it got published in Lebanon. Um, there's an English translation that got made and then later published. So people had access to Children of the Alley over the years. But within Egypt, in Nagi Mahfouz's own land, um, it took a long time for an edition to actually emerge. And then at the same time, um, you know, Nagi Mahfouz is a very famous Egyptian writer who, there was kind of like a groundswell of attention to his work, partially because of controversy for things like Children of the Alley, at least that at least Shoer's book made me feel that way. But Nagi Mahfouz is the first Arab writer to win the Nobel Prize for Literature. And what's also really interesting is that when he won it, it was very clear it was both a matter of extreme national pride for Egypt and it caused like a second explosion over Children of the Alley in his life. So people were very upset that he had won the prize. It's very clear that like a lot of other Arab authors were super jealous of Nagi Mahfouz and wanted to like find ways to trash him because he had gotten the Nobel Prize and they hadn't, or at least that's how the book made it feel to me. And at the same time, renewed interest in Nagi Mahfouz's work and Egypt's desire to kind of take him on as like a national representative of their art and culture 
while also having a problem with children in the alley, created like a whole different set of challenges. And what's really interesting about this to me is that throughout all of it, it really seems like Nagib Mafu stayed publicly super calm. And even in his private interviews, like it's... It's interesting because he clearly never felt that his book was inappropriate anyway, and I, I would agree on that. But it's also clear that his the way that he'll describe it kind of slips and slides over the years, depending on the political and social context that he's in. And sure, it doesn't say that explicitly, but I just read like several different interview clips. And it's like, in this year, this is what he was saying. And in this year, this is what everybody was saying about the book. And so it, this whole situation was messy. Because it's really clear that there's a lot at work. There are religious forces at work, political forces at work, um, fights about artistic and intellectual purity and the right to say what you really think. Um, you know, there's also disagreements because uh, Nagib Mahfouz had positions on Israel that not everybody agreed with. And so all of these things came together to put a lot of pressure on what he considered to just be a work of literature that he wanted to be taken on its own terms. And I think there are a lot of lessons in that for us. And also that it makes Children of the Alley itself more worth considering as a book to read. Like, I highly recommend that you go and read it. I actually recommend that you go read anything that somebody's trying to ban. But Children of the Alley is actually just very good. But it's just really interesting to kind of be reminded that our problems are not new problems. That people who are great artists and authors have had their ideas and their work suppressed throughout history. And that usually the reasons for that aren't very good and don't actually stay very steady over time. So I think if you're thinking about, I think most people who watch this channel are not into book banning and neither am I, but if it's something that you're trying to consider as an intellectual conversation, um, I actually highly recommend reading Children of the Alley, reading Scheuer's book, because it'll give you a perspective that's got a little bit of distance on what we're talking about now. And I think that it's helped me take a step back and look at our current, you know, books that everybody's going after. Things like Genderqueer or The Bluest Eye. And be reminded that the, these requests to ban things are very much of our current religious and cultural moment. And in my mind, that's actually a good reason not to ban things. Just because you're sensitive about something in the moment doesn't mean that you should be trying to pack away a book or keep its meaning hushed or keep people from accessing it. So that's what I've been thinking about this week. I've been thinking about Children of the Alley and about the overall story of the banned book. And I'll definitely be reading some more Nagib Mahfouz. I had some of his work on my shelf and I just hadn't gotten to it. And I regret waiting on that now. So that'll be hopefully a bunch of my reading for the next year is reading as much of his work as I can get my hands on in translation because it was really, really excellent. And you can see why he is the pride of Egypt and why he won a Nobel Prize. He clearly deserved it. So that's all for today. Thanks so much for watching. Please like, subscribe, comment. Uh, tell me about any banned books you've read recently. And most of all, happy reading.